Welcome to eDesign second lecture. Uh, for today we have quite a few things to discuss, so I'll try to go through it real quick. The first thing is uh, with regards to the communication channels. Um, when you choose to post a question on Teams, please be sure to post it in the Teams that we have made for it. So there's an assignment one Teams on Microsoft Teams, a team channel, and on that team channel you can post your, your request and one of the demis or I will um, then help you by maybe entering into a private chat. But please don't paste private chats uh, directly to people, otherwise the chances of getting answered is not that great. At least if you post it into the group, then we can service as we become available. So the many requests that I received over the weekend, I'm not going to respond to it. Um, you can post it into the Teams channel assigned to assignment one, and then we'll take it from there. Thanks. The second thing is um, hopefully you've all now chosen the voltage regulator. The correct one to choose is the linear voltage regulator, but you still need to justify it and show why. But the big reason is just the noise levels of the switch mode is too high. Um, you're never going to be able to, or you're going to struggle to reduce the noise to an acceptable level if you use the switch mode regulator. The only big reason people use switch mode regulators is because they have low power consumption. And in this case, you can easily meet the power requirements with a linear regulator, as long as you keep the resistances around the op-amp circuits very high. The, um, the next thing we need to discuss is with regards to the virtual grounds and the way that, you, um, that you're going to design for a virtual ground, because it's a, it's a pretty new theme to you. It's something that you've not really had to do before. So let's quickly do that. Now what we have is a small little temperature sensor and this temperature sensor has an output. So you give it a 0 volts and you give it a 5 volts. It gives you an output signal and this output signal can range from um, a very small value that represents minus, let's say, minus 40 degrees C as a maximum and let's say 75 degrees C at least minus 40 as a minimum and 75 as a maximum. However, we're only going to use a small subsection within this and this here is going to be our 34 degree C voltage and this is going to be the 42 degree C voltage and right in the middle here, that's our center point, it's going to be 38 degree C. So what we, what we have is essentially the following. Just bear with me as I, as I try to explain to you what's going on. So we have a temperature sensor that gives us an output signal and this output signal can be between different lines. So I'm just gonna draw it here. Let's say this minute signal of ours lies between two voltage lines where this represents um, the, the V max or 75 degrees C and this here represents the minus 40 degrees C and the temperature could range all the way between these two and just for demonstration purposes it's not an AC signal but just for demonstration purposes consider for a second it's a signal that does this now firstly I told you not to care about these voltage levels um, we, we only care about that range there from 34 to 42. So essentially this really doesn't matter to us. Um, we have a signal that's smaller than that, that falls into a much smaller level here. Let's, let's try to draw this here. So we're working, I guess you could just draw it like that. So it's something that that varies within that spectrum and that is then our 40 degrees as well the 42 degrees c and um 42 degrees c 34 degrees c and right in the middle there we're trying to make this thing bigger and remove an offset from it as soon as you're starting to amplify signals as soon as you start to make things much bigger the risk is always that you're going to run into the rails of an op amp 
into an operational amplifier. It's going to amplify so much that you exceed the limits of the op operational amplifier, especially if it's not centered. So if, if you have a signal, if this is your amplifier and you have a signal that does that, then obviously you're not using the full range of the op amp. And on this side, you're very likely to hit the rails if you amplify as much as you can. Now, in this case, I've obviously assumed a minus five volts and a five volt supply. And I'm assuming that the signal is then symmetrical, or at least the, the full swing is as symmetrical as you can have between five volts and minus five volts. Okay, so keep that in mind. So what we're trying to do is this whole range here from there to there, we want to move it down. We want to move it so that it is around zero volts. So let's draw that in. This here is my zero volts level. This here you can calculate what the volt is based on your own personal specification. You can calculate what those voltages are. Um, and now we want to just shift this whole thing down. So the way we shift it, like I said, we want it to be symmetrical. So we're going to take this level here and remove it. So in your circuit that you design, you have to remove that offset. So the first thing you want to get right is remove the offset. So let's just assume that we're working with V at zero degree C is equal to 500 millivolts and delta V per degree C is equal to 10 millivolts. That means that our voltage at 38 degrees C um, is the, the output of the, six, the sensor at that, at that temperature is equal to 500 plus 38 times uh, 10 millivolts. So that's 880 millivolts. So let's call that our midpoint. That is the midpoint of our expected voltage range. What does that mean? That means to make this thing swing about zero, we have to remove the offset. If you want to think of it as a DC offset, obviously this is not an AC signal, but still we want to move it down here. So we want to subtract from our signal 880 millivolts. That is what I'll call the offset. We want to remove that. So as soon as we do that, we now start with a new signal. Let's choose green for that. This new signal of ours is minute and it goes around here, All right? And its, its range is the same as the range we had there. Issue is now, it's still small. We want to amplify it. So in order to amplify it, we need to apply a gain. So you blow it up. To blow it up, we use the gain of the amplifier. So just in this case here, I told you that's the gain that you can apply. But first you have to remove something, mathematically remove, right? Subtract something. And then you have to blow it up. So that gain you, gain you apply, you apply that gain so that now your signal does that. That's horrible, sorry. Your signal does this. So you have to apply some kind of a gain. And how much do you amplify it? Well, you amplify it such that you, you can get the full extent of the range. Now, just take a step back. I said the full range here was 5 volts to minus 5 volts. In our case, the full range is actually 5 volts and 0 volts. That's the full range. It's 5 volts. So if you just for one second forget that this is 0 volts and 5 volts, just pretend this is minus 2.5 and this is 2.5 so that we still have the full range. Remember, the voltages are all relative. You don't have an absolute voltage. It's all the potential difference. Voltage is always between a point and another point. And we can really choose what our ground is. We don't, we don't have anything like a zero. Um, if, you, if you have a battery, for example, and you have a voltage divider, um, you can choose that to be your ground. There's no reason that can't be your ground. And then this just turns into a negative voltage and that's positive. It's all relative. It's all within our control and it's all in our minds. 
So anyway, we want to blow this thing up such that this then becomes our new, our new maximum. So this then becomes our new uh, 42 degrees C, and we want this as close to possible as 2.5 volts. The same thing on the, on the opposite side. So our 34 degrees C, we want to become as small as we can within our range. So let's just make that minus 2.5 volts. So you have to apply a gain to blow that up and to blow that up so that we get that full spectrum. So you can calculate your gain based on that. So now we have a signal that's very nicely amplified that does this. All right, remember again, it's not a sinusoid. I'm just using the sign to exercise the full range. Um, now the question is, how do we, what do we still have to do? Well, it's quite clear. What we still have to do is we have to apply a shift. So we took it down by applying a negative shift to it. Then we just have to, from the zero, apply a shift to take the whole thing up 2.5 volts so that it doesn't range from minus 2.5 to 2.5 but such that it ranges from 0 to 5. So I'm just going to draw that in as well. We have to then, from this point, we have to add a 2.5 to it such that such that the whole thing then goes like this where it reaches up to 5 volts and it goes all the way down to 0 volts so there's three steps to this there's remove the offset apply again and add what we call a virtual ground now in terms of the virtual ground just think for a moment here we have this whole configuration the input voltage is relative to something the input voltage is relative to something which we term to be ground in this case. This is attached to that ground and then the output voltage is attached to that ground. So an easy way to do this is to design the whole circuit assuming that you have assuming that you have this ground and that we have a minus 2.5 and a plus 2.5. And when you're done, when it's working, you just say, this is not really ground. This is actually, or at least this is not minus 2.5. This is actually, I'm just going to choose a different color again. Nice and nauseating. This is actually 0 volt. This is actually 5 volts. And this was actually 2.5. But it's all just... When you download the template from Sunlearn, uh, you will find three files. The one is your ASC file, this is your design template file. Then there's an external file called config.txt and pwinput, which stands for piecewise linear input.csv. So just want to show you where they tie in real quick. If I open up the design file, this is the template that you're going to start off with. Remember to rename it. Um, in this block, don't touch anything, please. This is where we import and export the signals that we need to auto-assess and to generate stuff. So typically, you would have added these in your uh, simulation control here. But what we've done is we've automated those. So don't touch these. You can, you can play with it if you want, but you need to revert to what they were before you submit, because that's what we use to, to assess you, or your circuit, rather. Um, you can see we have three voltage sources here. Um, they just introduce different signals, but the important thing to note is we also have an include e344config.txt. So I'm just going to open that real quick. This is what it's about. We have a few parameters in here. This is the DC amplitude with which we will introduce DC at some stage. The sine wave offset if we wanted to introduce another DC amplitude. And then the sine amplitude. So the noise that you have to filter as part of your design is specified by sine amplitude and another parameter that we defined sine frequency. So by setting the amplitude here, we will check that you suppress the signal. So you need to set this to the appropriate noise amplitude level when you develop. So we've set this to be one degree Celsius. So if your one degree Celsius is equal to five millivolts, 
you need to change this to 5. If it is 55, you need to, need to change it to 55 millivolts. So this is the amplitude. The sign frequency here is 50. That'll just be 50 for everybody. And then we also have here just the simulation parameters. So the transient analysis starts from 0. It runs up to 500 milliseconds. And the time step that we specify is 0.1 microsecond. Um, so that's the config file. So as I said, this config file is imported here. And those values are used in the setup of the simulation here. And then also in the DC amplitude here, the sine offset here, the sine amplitude, and the sine frequency. That's how they feed in. But one of these external inputs is also from the piecewise linear input. This is equivalent to if you look at the voltage source here, I've got piecewise linear input at CSV. It pulls it in from there. That's why it says piecewise input linear CSV. And if I open that file, this one contains the time in the first column. And the second column is just the value. So you need to convert this to give you the appropriate inputs. It's currently set to one of the input parameters. Um, essentially, you need to specify here your midpoint, which is the middle point between 42 degrees and 34 degrees. You need to specify that voltage level there. And then the 34 degrees level here and the... 42 degrees level you need to specify here. So this is what we'll use to auto assess 